Sabrina 2000's comic, Ichi 20. We start out with Sabrina complaining that on her first day at the shore, she has to study her witchcraft. Perfect demonstration of how this is nothing like the earlier comics. In all of the earlier Sabrina comics, Sabrina went to the beach by herself all the time like it was nothing, and she never got saddled with this. I'm willing to bet that all of her magic homework teaches her spells that she wouldn't be allowed to use anyways. Sabrina's relieved that her aunts told her she could practice on a deserted beach. I'm guessing she'll instantly be bothered by someone in the next panel, like Jem. Oh, okay. It's a beached whale that goes to interrupt her. That's more surprising. She wants to help it. And then she zaps it back into the ocean, with the teleportation power she clearly proved she could use earlier. No, that'd actually be good writing. If this was a remotely well-written comic, you'd predict good writing, and it would actually happen most of the time. Instead, you have to think, what's the opposite of what would actually happen? So Sabrina forgets she's a witch despite having magic homework, and thinks she can just push a gigantic animal back into the ocean with her tiny noodle limbs. We know she can summon things, so why doesn't she summon wind? As I expected, since I always expect logic anyways, she does look in her magic book, and she summons a big wave, when obviously she could have just levitated the whale over to further away in the ocean, or warped it away from her, not done something that would obviously get the book wet. Also, because nonsense, the whale heads for the beach all over again, being disoriented. It looks like it'd have to have brain damage or literally want to kill itself to do this. I wonder if the whale is only doing this because it's a part of a magic test for Sabrina. It's shocking that even in the animated series comic, which tries to completely distance itself from good Sabrina, Sabrina still references that she bothers mystical spirits, so just like in the 70s comic, she's borrowing spirits' powers to cast spells. An extra middleman that's not needed. And it being like the 70s series just makes me wish it was just like it. She asks for the power to breathe underwater because she thinks as convolutedly as a James Bond villain and doesn't just go for the obvious solution right away. She guides the whale to deep water. She sees a bunch of whales and for no reason her underwater spell wore off. It's not like an air bubble was always being drawn around her and so she just breathed in all of the oxygen around her that was held there by a force field. She doesn't look like she has gills. Why did she swim to the surface instead of just teleporting back to the beach? Like with Pixie does. Why did she call for help when she realized she swam too far out and the water's choppy? The pathetic wuss freaks out at not being able to see the shoreline instead of just warping home by pointing at herself or levitating or creating a new beach island for herself to sit on and extending its path all the way to the beach. If she's really too stupid to do that without having the composure to think up a spell to say. I hate that she's the protagonist. I hated her in the sitcom too, but I never thought she could get worse. She goes into a back float until she'd calmed down from her inexcusable freakout. Then she decides to follow some seagulls to land. So that was only written to educate us about this, when she could have just frozen the water. She says that her aunts would be glad to know that her swimming lessons are paying off. Her magic lessons aren't, though. It turns out that because bullshit, the seagulls were only fascinated by a post from an old pier and are just eating the barnacles. So she still lost at sea. So much for being educational. Why does she think that she needs to think of a spell to say to get back home? Just imagine that you're home. What a moron. She expects us to believe that she needs to say a spell to warp home. So she's too tired, thirsty, and hot and scared to think straight, even though she has no reason to be scared as an omnipotent witch. It's her fault she's thirsty because she could just zap up drinkable water at any time. And she could zap up a spinning fan to cool her down whenever she wants. Something comes up from underneath and it's the whale coming to save her. It would have made more sense if she simply cast a spell to make the whale save her. She sees the adult whales blocking the little whale from going into the shallow water and potentially being beached again. She gets slingshotted towards the beach and thanks the whales. She's also brought back to her magic book exactly, which I guess the whales knew to do by following her scent trail to that place. The story ends with her aunts being mad at her for going swimming instead of studying. 
I wish they would explain why they want her to study magic when they don't want her to use it. We're supposed to assume they want her to learn just for the sake of learning, but the same logic could be applied to them wanting to teach her about architecture instead. It'd make more sense to teach her how to do taxes, because at least she'd be encouraged to do that someday. The next story has her being bitched at because, oh, she's not allowed to have breakfast in bed, and she's levitating some breakfast on a tray to her bed. Yeah, because it's totally good to prevent someone from being happy. She's a witch. She should be able to just clean up any spell and crumbs instantly. Sabrina's not ready to get up yet, and fortunately she's allowed to do this, and Hilda tells her to remember that she's a witch, not a princess. A witch is better than a princess, and if she wants her to remember she's a witch, then what's the point of letting her have magic if she's never allowed to use it? Salem tells Sabrina that the princesses he's known throughout the centuries were a lot more pampered than her. How am I expected to believe she's the least bit pampered? Her parental figures are literally the most controlling ones I've ever seen in fiction. Even Dr. Eggman is more permissive as a parent. I'm serious. Adam shut off his nuke launch and there was no indication he punished him. And his son Junior in ALSDH was allowed to outright bully him. He could spit paper wads at him and put a kick me sign on him. Salem expects me to believe that a witch has to remember the exact words of a time travel spell to do it perfectly with no consequences. Even though his magic would know what he actually wants. So that's all that would happen. He gets teleported to a king, who miraculously speaks modern English just fine because I guess it's a parallel universe, not actually time travel. If there's no changing history's bad lecture here, then it might as well be. The king wants to kill Salem for interrupting his royal birthday feast rather than pet a cat. He doesn't question that Salem's talking at all. And he humors Sabrina when she asks him to spare him and calls him dad. Sabrina's a good protagonist for once because she wants to enjoy this. Honestly, I don't blame her one bit. She deserves a vacation from those people. But I'm guessing the story will end up making her time miserable eventually to make her want to go home. Sure, the king's okay with flimsy execution reasons, but she's a witch. Would she be able to just brainwash him into changing his mind? Rotunda can do it. She wishes she could get this kind of service at home as she's poured a drink and given fruit, and Salem hates juggling as the court jester. Is everyone brainwashed into not questioning that Salem can talk? Sabrina's given the bad news that the king has a stomach ache from eating his entire birthday cake at once, so he's unable to rule, which means that Sabrina's in charge. What a bad coincidence that could have easily not happened. What terrible timing on Salem's part, huh? Why doesn't Sabrina or Salem just point and make the stomach ache go away? Or change their mind about this? Medical spells exist in this comic. I'm interested to see exactly how Sabrina would run a country. But instead the story is rushed because she's immediately put off by peasants throwing tomatoes at her for high taxes. Before she can get the chance to put the taxes the way they should be, by taxing the rich instead, and show off her compassion, that's squandered because a freaking dragon is outside the castle looking for her. This is definitely a parallel universe and not time travel because a dragon wants to be on Earth and would have no reason to look for her in particular. This story's stupid. How many times have I had to say that? Why can't the story just be allowed to progress naturally? I was taking it seriously until this point. She's told that her fiancé is here to protect her. And Salem explains that a princess doesn't get to choose who she'll marry. Okay, we're back to realistic consequences here. Sabrina hates the fiancé. And instead of using magic to make him like Harvey, and then brainwashing the others to not question it, she says that she doesn't want to be a princess anymore. And her magic automatically brings her home again. Why is this just the case for this situation? It was Salem who cast that spell. So how is she able to undo it? No part of Salem's spoken spell said until she decides she doesn't want it going anymore. The story ends with Sabrina serving her aunt's breakfast as they fortunately smile in appreciation for it. They don't deserve this. They're the ones who drove her away. Maybe the reason she didn't feel like getting up in the morning was because they're smothering her so much. In the next story, Zelda starts complaining about bills while throwing some papers around and somehow Salem asks if she's rooting for Buffalo but his expression looks like he's serious. It was a pathetic joke in the first place. 
but it could have been funny if he looked like he was being sarcastic. Salem zaps up a treasure chest for her, and she whines at him and zaps the chest away, saying that she's not using magic to solve her financial problems. Bullshit. This is coming from someone who uses magic so much that it becomes automatic. She says that the answer is for her to return to her old job, rather than for her to keep doing what she has to be doing to pay the bills otherwise, and sell one of her antiques, the things she's kept long enough to become antiques. She then warps away, saying there's apparently no time to chat now, because she doesn't want to be late on her first day back. She was just talking as if she only came up with the idea to return to her old job now, and yet she's already expected back today. This panel seems familiar to me. The only job she was hinted at having so far is that she used to be a superstar like Britney Spears, and yet Sabrina's not assuming that she's going to go back to that. Instead, Salem says that she obviously never told her about her days in the workforce, and she's still got her plaque here, which says that she was the best real estate person in the other realm. And she has her expected hairstyle and glasses in this flashback, when she looked different as a superstar. Was this before or after she was a singer? Why does she have to be the best just because she's a main character? It's already Crater's pet enough that she was a superstar before, but I gave it a pass because it's a witch series that's trying to be even more cartoony, so it was doing it to be outlandish, but now it's doing this again. She's got two talents she's way too good at. Why don't they spread this out and make Hilda the great salesperson, so we'd know her backstory? It'd make no difference because they're basically clones of each other. As he told her when she retired, she's always got a job here, which is why she was immediately allowed to come back. I wish it was explained right away that these other realm creatures that aren't witches are simply aliens. It's the only possible conclusion, but it would have been less annoying to me when I was younger, and I was just wondering why we were seeing these weird creatures instead of simply seeing witches in the witch realm. Why the focus on these instead? I guess because they're more visually interesting, but it doesn't take advantage of the witch realm, and sometimes they look too bad to be worth it. The skeleton family immediately wants to live in a house that's just a skeleton, because I guess it doesn't rain or snow here. And they never need the privacy when going to the bathroom because they're just skeletons, so they don't. They're probably more like androids than actual living beings. I definitely have the story. We see a montage of panels showing visual puns where Zelda gives a hunchback a bell tower and a giant a house with a high ceiling. The rest are worthless to see. Zelda tells Hilda to make a deposit, as I wonder why other realm money is accepted on Earth. It'd be counterfeit for them to make more money themselves, and there's only so much Earth money. So if the Earth money was being brought to the other realm so much, won't its disappearance from the economy entirely be noticed? So won't this be illegal? Hilda asks her if she minds working so much, and she says that she doesn't, but I'm guessing she'll get tired of it anyways because the status quo is God, even though it's not. Zelda having a job gave me respect for her. There's a reason she has a job in the sitcom. Why would they have a story where she gets a job and not even explain how she was paying the bills before? She couldn't have been paying for stuff on Earth with centuries-old money left over. The money would attract attention and not be accepted because it's too out of date. She'd have to sell it in exchange for real money, so I guess she does that? Sabrina gets shown a portal that's scheduled to be closed because too many monsters are getting through. And Sabrina naturally mistakes Zelda's employer for one, and she's lucky he doesn't take offense. He says that Zelda talks about Sabrina all the time, and out of complete nowhere, she says that because she doesn't see her all the time, she's gonna re-retire. That was quick. She wanted to see her all the time anyways because Sabrina would go to school while she sold houses. Why can't she negotiate for different hours if the problem is that she's working when Sabrina isn't at school? She wants to notice a difference. If her boss is fine with her quitting out of nowhere all over again when he just got her back, if it's not being realistic, he'd probably agree to her having more lenient hours too. The first story by Mike Gallagher is about Sabrina finding a beached whale instead of just levitating it far out to the ocean. The rest of the story happens, insulting my intelligence, and she somehow almost drowns. So that's stupid. The second story, by Angelo, is about Sabrina knowing what it's like to be a princess. 
This made me wish the story would be the main story and last much longer, so I'd learn exactly how she'd want to run the country. Any problems she had could have easily been solved by her magic. But instead she wants to go home because she hates her fiancé. Instead of zapping up Harvey and making it so that he can't question any of this. Considering how her aunts were nagging her for the smallest of reasons, why well, was I expected to think her coming here and staying here was a bad thing? The third story, by Gallagher again, is about Zelda going back to work as a real estate saleswoman for aliens. But just when I got to respect her more than I ever did, because I know why she's getting the money for the bills and she's contributing, and as a talent, nope, she quits out of nowhere because she misses Sabrina. But I barely ever get the impression that she really likes her. She's not constantly being affectionate to her. I assumed she was only working when Sabrina was at school anyways. Or she could have brainwashed her boss into giving her more lenient hours if she couldn't just ask for them in the first place. This story was interesting to see, but it could have had a lot more material to take advantage of the whole supernatural characters. And there was no reason for this to not change the status quo. This is sort of a good story because of all the supernatural stuff. But it's ruined by the ending! Zelda and Hilda have the same personality, and Sabrina's at home when she's not at school. So nothing would change if Zelda was at work when she was at school. Why can't she keep that job?